Hiya, it's Claire again and we're here for the exciting edition which is actually getting your hands on the hook and, and the yarn. Um, other crochet books that I've read spend a lot of time talking about how to handle the hook. My experience is that actually it doesn't really matter, particularly in the initial instances. Crochet is a skill that was passed down from mothers to daughters, um, usually verbally, and I think it's one of those things where people have uh, found lots of different ways to um, to crochet and they're all equally as good as the other. I tend to hold the hook like this overhand so if you look there I curl uh, my little finger and my, my ring finger around the bottom and then I've got this free. I have seen people that, that crochet underhand like this um, I guess like you know you would hold your knife. Um, so really it's a case of getting a feel for it and similarly with the yarn I do something that looks a bit complicated and what it does is make sure that the tension is equal so your final finished piece, if you look at something like this for example, it's all even. If your tension wasn't even, some bits would be tight, other bits would be loose and it wouldn't lay flat. Excuse my phone, I've got some eBay things coming up which is bad timing. So what I do is I wrap the yarn around, all the way around my little finger, underneath my two middle fingers and then over the top of this one and it means that when I crochet I can work here. So to show you that again you go round your little finger underneath the two middle ones and over the top. Now you might find that this is a little bit complicated to do when you're first starting and it's too much for you to worry about in which case just leave it really it doesn't matter how you hold the hook and needle as long as you have a go you don't put too many barriers in the way. So First stitch we need to do is a slip knot. This might drive you mad. This stage of crochet, not just the slip knot, but the chain foundation stitch or chain stitch, actually drives many people to distraction and it really is the most difficult part of crochet. If you can persist and practice and get over this hump, then it's really good because you know that, that's what you need to do to make sure that you can go on. Once you've cracked this, the rest of it isn't too difficult at all. So the slip knot, if you can't do it, you need to make a loop that goes over your finger so you have a loop here, like an upside down noose. Then you get your tail end and you go all the way around from back to front and then you tuck the tail end down the loop that's round your thumb. Okay, and pulling on the noose bit, when you pull it, you have a loop with a knot in it which will become your first stitch. And you can tell it's a slip knot because if you pull the ends, it disappears. So do that again. You go over your finger and make your noose. Then you go round your thumb and then you tuck the tail into the bit on your thumb. Okay, pull the noose and you have your slip knot. And I'll just do it one last time so I can do it in slow motion. And that becomes your very first one. And once you've got that, you can pop it on your stick, on your hook, and that becomes your very first stitch. Fab. Well done. Now, before I go on to showing you how to chain stitch, I want to show you the anatomy of a stitch because this becomes quite important later on. I've used a really big fat hook here um, because it helps you to make a looser stitch and you can kind of see how it works. Basically, the chain stitch as you might imagine by its name, is a long set of stitches all linked together like a chain. Now it's made up of three different strands. You'll notice on the one side, could you zoom in on this please? You'll notice on the one side it looks almost like a plait if you plait your hair. Two strands, you can see them here, one there and one there, and they line neatly. And then if you turn it over the other side, there's just the one. So the chain stitch is almost triangular in shape. You have the two sides of the stitch on the flat part and then when you turn it over you have the bump. Now it's important to know this because when you fix your stitches into the chain stitch or foundation stitch 
you need to go under the two flat loops here and that will secure the next row. Okay, so now we've got our first stitch. This is what we need to do. You get your slip knot, then you get your hook. You go behind the yarn, pick it up, pull it through. Behind the yarn, pick up the yarn, pull it through. Behind the yarn, pick up the hook, pull it through. Behind the yarn, pick it up, pull it through. Now it looks really simple. It might take you a little while to get your head round how to do this because again, it's muscle memory. It's not something that you can learn. It's something that your fingers need to get the feel of. Hold on to the bottom um, tail or onto your stitches and that helps you do the next one. So the, your hook goes behind the yarn, pull it through. Behind the yarn, pull it through. If you're finding it really difficult to get it through, it's probably because you're pulling too tight. Try and loosen up. Behind the yarn, pull it through. Go as large as you can and as loose as you can and as floppy as you can. Behind the yarn, pull it through. Behind the yarn, pull it through. Fab. So that's the end of this session. What I'd like you to do before we start the next session is to see whether you can make a chain that's a hundred chains long. That would be perfect. Thank you very much. Bye.